thank you to Erling Kulberg and Musik Studerende's Kor. And we will now bestow this year's honorary doctors. The first honorary doctor is Professor James Phelan, who will now be presented in a short video on the screen behind me. The latter part of the 20th century, the the 20th century um, um, scholarship, on, scholarship on narrative took really two main forms. One is this um, close attention to the internal structure of narrative. And then on the other hand, there's a, an approach to narrative that's more historicist, contextualist. Um, and these two kinds uh, of narrative study um, don't actually mesh which, with each other very well. This is exactly where Jim comes in. He comes in at exactly the, the meeting point, and he allows these two approaches to mesh by way of his rhetorical approach to narrative. When I got to graduate school, actually, I was somewhat disconcerted by what seemed to me um, a gap between what the formal study of literature was all about and what I was doing when I sat down with literary works. And I met a teacher in my first year, Sheldon Sachs, who provided a way to sort of close that gap. And he did that by focusing on the question of um, do we read the same books and what does it mean to answer that question by saying that um, we read the same books because we can recognize commonalities of experience um, in the reading, not just um, you know, commonalities of uh, thematic meanings that we can derive from them. So that's really been, been the drive behind it. It's, it's a drive that's led to lots of new terms. Um, uh, I have talked about six types of unreliability. I've talked about three kinds of readerly interest. The goal sort of behind all that is, I'm not trying to invent terms for the sake of inventing terms, but trying to give us greater access to that life we live as readers. I think one of the things that's next is, is for me to both do some more work with fiction and to um, expand or to broaden the sense. And so thinking about, about the relationship between nonfiction, fiction, and fictionality, um, I think has uh, enormous potential um, for complicating our understandings of both fiction and nonfiction. Um, and Hen Henrik and uh, Stephen and others in that group here in Aarhus, um, th this is a group that um, seems to be on the cutting edge of the thinking about fictionality. And I really think that I'm now part of an ongoing conversation with um, the fictionality group at Aarhus and that's going to be very productive for me. I would like to invite Professor Phelan to come forward. Professor James Phelan, you are a leading world figure in the field of narrative theory. Your research and teaching have won several awards and prizes, and since 2008 you have been Distinguished Professor at Ohio State University. You are the editor of the prestigious journal called Narrative. Academics here at Aarhus University and elsewhere describe you as extremely generous and welcoming, and you have a unique ability to engage with new ideas, including ideas that you disagree with. <laughs> Your home and office are always available for academic discussions, exchanges, and friendly get-togethers. And your academic endeavors have included traveling to countries across the globe to share your knowledge and insights about rhetoric and narrative. And during your travels, you have frequently visited Aarhus University to conduct summer schools, to give lectures, and to work with our research groups on shared papers, on projects, and applications. We are very happy that Aarhus has a place in your heart, and we treasure what you have done for this university. It's my great privilege and pleasure to confer on you the degree of Dr. Philosophis Honoris Causa at Aarhus University. Congratulations, Professor Phelan. I will now leave the floor to Nils Christian Nielsen, uh, Dean of Science and Technology.
at Duke University in Durham, North Carolina, Pankaj Agarwal explores geometric algorithms. In the words of Plato, geometry existed before creation and it leads a soul toward truth. It made me realize that as computers start interacting with the, our physical world, geometry is integral part. So whenever you use a computer to solve or reason about problem dealing with the physical world, geometry shows up, whether it's at the molecular scale or it's a global scale. What I have done is develop general computational and mathematical techniques to model and analyze geometric data, and then apply them to areas such as environmental science, molecular biology, and robotics. We hear all the time, this is the age of big data. As the massive amounts of data are being collected through various sensing devices, the question is what we can do with that data, how we can convert that data into useful knowledge. The foundation of Argawal's research is to find meaningful information in big data sets through the prism of geometry. Collaborating with the researchers at Aarhus University, we were able to develop algorithms for modeling and analyzing large amounts of geospatial data, and that has led to a long and successful collaboration. One of the areas where I've been using my research is to model terrain on our different parts of Earth and analyze hydrology, for example, when heavy rain falls, then which areas will get flooded or because of climate change when the sea level rises. The research is important because mostly for the hydrology you want to build better flood risk maps. You want to know where to build your house, you want to know how much should I pay for insurance in these areas, and uh, how, where should I build dams, where should I be worried about flood from various sources. Aarhus has the leading research center called Mad Algo which is uh, unique in its scope and its expertise. For the last seven years, I have been working with Madalgo researchers on combining geometry with big data sets. Among other things, it has led to the formation of the startup company, Scalgo. Yes, yeah, so we founded the company in 2009 to really commercialize this research that we've been doing. And we really want to take all these massive data sets that are out there and make them actionable for, for businesses and actually research institutions and really make it provide good commercial support. This collaboration seeks to offer tools for geospatial data analysis over diverse computing platforms, from cloud to handheld devices. I have benefited tremendously from this uh, successful collaboration, and I hope that will continue. Join me on the floor. Professor Pankai Agarwal is one of the world leading, if not the world leading researcher within computational geometry. He is highly recognized not only for his substantial theoretical contributions to computational geometry, but also for establishing and strengthening links between the research area and a number of application areas. Pankai Agarwal has a very close relationship with Aarhus University, including a research collaboration with many co-authored uh, publications with AU researchers at the Center for Massive Data Algorithms, Madalgo, where he also serves as a very active member of the Scientific Advisory Board. The collaboration also encompasses several joint U.S. research grants. Dear Professor Arjeval, on this background, it is my great privilege and indeed a pleasure uh, to me to confer you on the Dr. Scientarium Honorarius Causa at University, uh, Aarhus University. And now I'll leave the floor to Alan Flubia, Dean of Health. I'm Sandra Greenland. I'm Emeritus Professor of Epidemiology at the UCLA School of Public Health and Emeritus Professor of Statistics at the UCLA College of Letters and Science. I wanted to do something that was relevant to health and uh, I searched around for a while and I found, through thanks to a fellow student, epidemiology 
which looked just perfect for me because it took a lot of statistical expertise to understand what was going on, but it was very relevant for public health and individual health as well. I've always been, of course, interested in uh, what are the statist latest statistics on this or that, whether it's a health trend or economy or whatever. I can see that there are topics that people are debating, and if it looks like there's nobody in the debate that's getting certain points, then I really do feel compulsion to jump in and make those points. Well, I think the best of my contribution has been in translating uh, uh, ideas and methodologies and uh, some theory from other fields into epidemiology and um, trying to make them practical for epidemiologic use with uh, appropriate cautions. Uh, I was heavily influenced uh, when I was a student by uh, the work of Oli Mietman, who was at Harvard then, uh, but because uh, I got away from that in the 1980s when I was uh, entering a faculty, I was able to be, participate in the introduction of uh, explicit causal modeling methods into epidemiology and the use of those to figure out uh, epidemiologic problems. My ongoing objectives is to present case studies of some of the points that uh, I and others have made in the literature that uh, aren't spreading too fast and do case studies. So, uh, the university uh, has uh, research and data resources, especially that will help in illustrating uh, these ideas. Bjorn Olson, who I've known for over 30 years and is currently in epidemiology, has uh, played an important role in, uh, in helping organize uh, collaborations and um, also even organize conferences. Well, uh, the biggest thing I've learned is that uh, it's, you really don't learn solidly the details of something sometimes until you try and teach it to people who don't understand it yet. So uh, for me, teaching has, has been one of the core learning experiences, keeping me uh, fresh in terms of my knowledge. Format. And as usual, I have to adjust this to average male height. <laughs> as it appears from the presentation of Professor Greenland, he is indeed within the international elite in the field of theoretical and applied epidemiology. For decades, he has been a leading force in developing and refining the research methods used in public health, as we just heard. Without any doubt, Professor Greenland is the most productive scientist in theoretical epidemiology. Professor Greenland combines skills within mathematics, statistics, philosophy, and epidemiology, and uses these tools to improve and refine the scientific quality of the research field worldwide. Accordingly, we know today much more about the impact, but also, very importantly, the limitations of epidemiology today that we did 30 years ago, and this is mainly due, I have to say today, due to all your achievements. Thank you for that. There are many past, present, and future potential connections between Santa Greenland and Aarhus University, and there's no doubt that you will act as an icon for many present and forthcoming researchers at this university. Accordingly, it is my privilege and pleasure to confer on you the degree Dr. Medicine Honoris Causa at Aarhus University Thank you so very much, Professor Greenland. And it is now my pleasure to invite my colleague, Sven Hülleberg, Dean of School of, Mid of Business and Social Sciences, to step uh, forward. Please, Sven. My interest in economic data in the my interest economy in started as an undergraduate when I happened to read a couple of books and models. And it was obviously very intriguing how one could learn about the economy from data rather than from theory. So my doctorate followed that up and I've always been interested in can we learn much about how economies function by looking at the evidence, which is immensely complicated. Economies change all the time, there's big breaks, there's lots of evolution. Today is nothing like 100 years ago. 
and yet somehow we've got to extract evidence about how people are behaving from that information. I think the problem with a vast amount of empirical macro is it's been so excessively simplistic to try and keep in touch with simplistic theory that it hasn't told us anything about the real world. The main contribution that I've made to econometric modeling is to allow us to handle very complicated, very large models. Because everything's interrelated in the economy, one can't actually sort things out without sorting everything that's important out simultaneously, which is extremely difficult. So getting a method that would analyse that sort of data has taken about 35 years, but we are there now, I'm very glad to say. I first went to Aarhus in 1984 to examine Sven Hulleberg's doctorate on seasonality, in fact jointly with Timo Teresverta, who's now a professor at Aarhus. And we had an amusing time discussing whether or not seasonal adjustment, for example, of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony wouldn't ruin it rather than improve it. Since then, I've had lots of contact with Sven over the years and with Timo, and went to the 50th anniversary uh, celebration of the Faculty of Business and uh, Law, Economics and Law, at Aarhus in 1986, where we went to Sandberg, which is uh, the house of Karen Blixen's sister, and had a tremendous conference because it was the start of multivariate co-integration analysis, the first time we could deal with many variables, all of which were evolving simultaneously and perhaps very highly connected. And of course, most recently, gave a Creates Distinguished Lecture on my work in model selection and then attended Sven Hulleberg's Festschrift as we celebrated his many achievements over the years. This relationship with Aarhus has obviously been reciprocal. There have been many exchanges in both directions. They have faculty from there who visited LSE where I used to be and Oxford. And of course, we're working very similar problems. If one wants to analyse economic data about the large economy at large, then one needs very similar methods. And the faculty there, people like uh, Niels Haldrup as well as Timo Teresverta, have made important contributions to our ability to do so. I would like to ask Professor Henry to step forward, please. As uh, presented in this video, that brings back many fond memories. Davy is, is a truly respected colleague and a dear friend to many of us from the Department of Economics and Business. His thoughts ha have had very substantial influence on the whole profession and also on us at Aarhus University. Pro Professor Henry is a world-recognized scholar, very influential, but also a controversial econometrician, and you could almost hear that. Much of his research has focused on the development of a comprehensive methodological approach to the empirical modeling of time series in many fields, including economics. His revolutionary work has been promoted and used through publicly available software packages and so, through significant empirical imp implications of the methodology. It is my great privilege and pleasure to confer on you the title Dr. Economia Honoris Causa at Aarhus University. Congratulations, Sir David Henry.